Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Wow. We are absolutely honored today to have a very special guest in for this week's Fistful of Collars, none other than Raphael Lovato Jr. Raphael, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for coming in. It's great to finally be here. Thanks for having me. Man, pure luck that we managed to get you into the uh, into the studio this week because um, you just so happen to be in Austin. Uh, you're training. Um, well, we all know you've got your MMA fight coming up soon, but tell us, what, why are you in Austin? What are you doing? Um, well, I have a... Uh uh, you know, a little partnership with on it. Um, they've been sponsoring me for some time and, um, I love to come down here and visit their facility. Um, you know, get some solid training in, um, their, their headquarters is just amazing. You know, they just expanded. Now they have like a martial arts facility on one side and then the sports performance in the gym on the other side. Um, and I can really like, kind of get away, but still be in my sort of normal routine of conditioning, training, you know, grappling, Muay Thai, um, everything, sparring, uh, and still have like recovery, um, good food, you know, all those things that uh, that are essential to my routine. Man, um, I mean, to be honest, it sounds like you're being spoiled then. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I am, I, I'm definitely a bit spoiled here for sure. Um, and then of course I have a lot of friends, um, it's great food. Austin's an amazing city. So I, I did visit Aust- uh, did, did visit the Onnit facility a couple of years ago, and um, I mean that place is like Disneyland, yeah. right? They got all the toys, and but uh, tell us a little bit about what what the training is that you're actually doing right now, because nine weeks out approximately, right, from mm-hmm. your MMA fight in, uh, in in London in mm-hmm. June against Gegard Mousasi as the title fight, mm-hmm. Bellator middleweight title. Uh, what what are you doing training wise right now? Are you already in the camp or? Oh yeah, um, I like to start camp about ten weeks wow. um, for especially for a fight of this magnitude. Um, so you know, uh, obviously I'm uh, kind of in phase one, you know, um, which is picking things up, you know, getting the sparring going and everything. Um, and this week, I mean, so far this week, let's see, it's just been amazing. He's really put together all of this for me. He's my 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 guy at on it. So he's kind of uh, he's organized this uh, this whole kind of like yes, training week for yeah, you. Yeah, hundred percent. And he's a he's a jujitsu black belt, um, ex UFC fighter, and he's currently making his comeback. Uh, it's MMA, so he's getting ready for a fight too. So it just worked out perfectly. He's a one eighty five er. That's great. Um, and so, he's not the only big name you've been training with, right? Uh, well, uh, Tim Kennedy was also there on Monday. So uh, very awesome to mix it up with him. That guy, so much experience. Another very well rounded fighter. Um, great guy, you know, awesome energy. So we had fun. Uh, so we had that scrappling session on Monday. You know, I got 10 rounds in with them. And then uh, later that day, uh, I had a conditioning, strength conditioning session with Primal Swolger, Eric Leha. Um, definitely look that guy up um, if, if you're not familiar. Um, he's uh, just like a, a kettlebell, mobility, all around badass. Um, and uh, he put me through a great, great session. Um, you know, then they got the sauna there, everything, a little recovery. Uh, Tuesday, let's see, what did I do Tuesday? I mean, that's an incredible schedule. How, how do you mentally stay with it throughout all that, that work? That's amazing. Just get used to it. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, job, squeezed, huh? <laughs> I squeezed in a nap in between, uh, a little nap. But, uh, I mean, two to three sessions a day is pretty normal for me wow. uh, in an MMA camp. There's just so much you have to do you have to do, you know? Mm. Um, so, you know, obviously I balance it out well. Uh, Tuesday morning was, was light. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly what I did. Uh, I know I did some Muay Thai and something else. Um, and the Tuesday night was, um, was sparring. Um, and then Wednesday, yesterday was a recovery day. So I always put that kind of in the middle. Probably need it after the sparring, right? Yeah. Two hard days <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Uh, for me, you know, I kind of over the years, I, I figured out that Wednesday's a good day to tone it down just mm. a bit so I can, you know, uh, balance the week kind of in halves. First couple days, next couple days. Um, and I uh, guess, you know, just sort of no offense to bring this up, but you are 35 as well, right? So <laughs> I am. <laughs> and, 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 I, and when I say you're 35, I mean that as in, in in combat athlete years, that's a lot of miles on the clock. So I assume that, you know, with over 20, 25 years of, of training in, in various martial arts, you probably learned when to push and when to back off, right? For sure, most definitely. Um, for me, I think that's that's part of the game, you know, just like you have to get better at your technique, 
you know, your strength conditioning, you know, uh, all those training areas, your your mental and everything, all that um, is also directly correlated, correlated to your routine, mm. you know. Um, and I think that's something that not everyone talks about, um, but just, you know, dialing in your routine. Even if I was in my 20s right now, I, I wish I could go back and and do more recovery, you know, and and think more about yoga and mobility and stretching and all those things, um, you know, because I definitely put myself through more than what I should have, uh, even though I was young and I was able to push through it. Um, you know, understanding that there are some days where I was just doing ridiculous stuff that really wasn't giving me any gains, you know what I mean? Um, so over the years, obviously you, you get smarter um, and just dialing in my routine to what it is today, I feel like, you know, it's um, as professional and as, you know, um, spot on as, as what it could be. Um, and that's one of the things I've learned, you know, uh, like that Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday is, uh, is a lighter day um, because if I go hard three days in a row, uh, something's more likely to happen. Thursday, you know, I'm not going to feel that strong. So chances um, of getting hurt yeah, is going to be higher. That exactly. Kind of thing, and just right? losing motivation, you know. Mm. Uh, the other part, too, is uh, with dialing in that routine and, and everything that, that you have to, you know, plug into that, you got to make sure you stay happy. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, just stay happy, stay lively, energetic. Um, and, you know, along with that, you, you find the, the happiness and the enjoyment in spending an hour and a half just stretching and doing mobility or, you know, just focusing on a, a recovery day um, and, and not putting in your mind like, uh, this is a waste. I need to be killing myself. You know what I mean? This is actually making me as much better as if I was doing a training session. You know what I mean? It's mentally you have to tell yourself, this is making me better. This is a part of it. It keeps me happy. It keeps me fresh. So I'm that much better for the next session and I can get more out of that next session. Would now, you say, uh, <laughs> no, I was just going to say, sorry, Chase, that uh, that we're all masters eligible around this table, unfortunately, <laughs> right? There's I'm hitting a, master two this year. Yeah, I'm there. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? That, you know, that's something that you tend to learn as you get older. But Chase, I remember when you interviewed Lovato a couple of months ago, mm. uh, you actually said that you, you learned a lot from that talk about the recovery and you even started doing some of it, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I, I, it's related to what I was going to ask. Yeah. Um, when people say stretching and like I like to stretch, I know I'm a, a 25 minute stretch person. Like I'm just lazy. I, I don't particularly love it or anything. But you just That's said still you pretty good. for an hour and a half. I mean, is that what a normal session looks like for you? Man, it's super easy for that to happen. Like, um, you know, I get the foam roller. I have different like balls, like lacrosse ball, tennis balls, things like that. And, um, you know, I kind of blend a little bit of the stretching, the foam rolling and everything into some mobility, some yoga. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm super blessed nowadays. I have a, a new teacher in my life. His name is Cameron Shane. Um, he's uh, very well known in the yoga mobility uh, community um, for his creation of uh, Budokan movement arts. And uh, actually, Ryan Smith Films, who's done several jiu-jitsu documentaries, did a documentary about me. He just released... a. Um, uh, a new documentary about Cameron and his uh, history and uh, creating the Budokan movement. So we arts. can get to see what that kind of looks like. Exactly. And and inside that documentary, um, I'm actually in, in camp uh, for my last fight at the end of last year. And uh, and so there's a lot of footage of me, you know, sparring and training, getting ready for that fight with like Shanji and uh, one of Cameron's students who's a MMA fighter, Josh Berkman, famous UF, ex-UFC fighter. Mm -hmm. um, and we were, you know, getting after it. But, uh, you know, so my my stretching sessions will easily turn into like some crawling, mobility and flow, um, you know, that kind of stem from Cameron's Budokan training. Also, my strength conditioning coach, Luke Tyree, uh, is also very, you know, in tune with that same um, flow mobility style um, training. And, uh, and so, like I said, it, it's super easy for a little stretch just to become, you know, an hour plus like that, uh, whether it's a warm up, a cool down, or just all I'm doing. Um, and then I like to plug in those specific sessions where that's all I do, you know. And yesterday I had a great, yeah, it was yesterday, my recovery day, Wednesday, uh, I had a great uh, mobility movement session with uh, one of the trainers at Onnit, Francesca, who's um, 
you know, uh, really focused on that element, um, and they have her there. And so, you know, it, it was an hour of just nonstop movement, just body weight, you know. Um, and one of those sessions that you go in, you're a little sore, a little beat up, a little tired, you know, I just sparred the night before. But at the end of it, you feel better, you mm -hmm. know. The old me, like, um, you know, even in my 20s, you know, obviously early 20s, I would go like a month straight before I took a day off, you know. <laughs> um, and it was always hard every day, you know, multiple times a day. But as I got later into my 20s, you know, I would take days off and things like that. Um, Did you have that mentality that if you weren't like lifting heavy or sparring hard or, or, or you know, doing some sprints wasn't or doing something anything, intense, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my, my opponents were were outworking me right you know right. that was my mindset yeah. you know um for sure because and, you know you you've always been um a very mobile big man right and i think that anybody who's watched your jujitsu you know you're obviously you're you've always competed in the upper weight classes but um one of your best attributes has always been the fact that you've been very agile very flexible and, and mm -hmm. able to move your body whereas um up until a couple of years ago the bigger men in jujitsu they were generally categorized by just being kind of big heavy strong but not necessarily mm -hmm. mobile yeah now it was we, more unique to find the mobile big right man, for sure we've seen a big shift in the last couple of years though right i mean like we watch the the, the heavyweights and, and up nowadays and you see an ultra heavyweights doing amazing stuff right do, mm -hmm. do you think that it, this is something that's maybe filtered down a lot more people are aware of that kind of training well i think jujitsu gives you more mobility obviously mm. you know it makes you more mobile um i think a lot of what's happening is the big guys nowadays all of them started when they were young you know that's what happened with me you know uh obviously i'm a big guy now but when I was doing jujitsu, you know, I started 12, 13 years old. I'm a kid, you know, you're the smallest one in the room and you're forced to play guard and, you know, um, learn how to be the small guy first and then you grow into your body. And that's something I'm super thankful for, um, you know, because then you, you get to develop the full, the full uh, complete game, you know, uh, before your size really kicks in. Um, and that's something you just kind of like try to carry with you is like just re remember what it was like to be the smaller guy <laughs> yeah well it, it, it's always in me you know I, I like i prefer to be on top nowadays oh, i yeah. think <laughs> as everyone gets older that's kind of how it goes um but I, I i still enjoy playing guard and you know basically every round that i train i always start by pulling guard first um you know so um it's like the classic I, having fun with it, well, right? you know what i mean like mm. you know um the for me i've always enjoyed the movement inside of martial arts you know um that's why i don't like to get stuck doing too much of the same thing you know even earlier on you know i started cross training in judo and wrestling um and you know uh growing up i mean under the influence of my father we, we, we always trained everything and the thing that i always gravitated to the most the thing that made me excited to train and excited to compete was feeling how my body would move you know um like there would be there, for, for instance there could be a, a competition where i won but there wasn't that much action you know what i mean maybe the matches weren't uh, that exciting or you know um it, it was just super even or whatever maybe i was able to 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 be victorious but i was just like man that just wasn't that much fun because we didn't move that much mm. and then there might be another tournament where i didn't didn't win you know but i had i had some matches where there was a lot of action a lot of things happened and i could go back and, and have a lot more data to go back to training with and say okay here's what i need to get better at or whatever and i just felt like there was more of an exchange i love the exchange Do you also you know? feel it was like a better representation of you know your jujitsu what you actually do with your body at that point yeah for sure i mean uh, you know uh, being able to express yourself through movement you know mm -hmm. that's martial arts it just so happens that the movement has a a bit of violence to it, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, but and more so recently, as you've gone towards MMA, right? The last couple of years, because you know, for you, you, you obviously cross train in your entire life, but you spent so much of your career as a professional athlete purely as a grappler, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it was actually it was relatively recently, you know, the last couple of years or, or, or more that you you started moving over to uh, to MMA, and you've. Um, You've not left grappling behind. Let's make sure that's very, very clear. Your, mm -hmm. you know, your ADCC invite came through. You're going to be competing later this year at the World Championships. You yes. know, back again for I think it's your fourth ADCC. Seventh. <gasps> Seventh. Oh in my a row. god. 
where you been, Hal? I know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I've just had all those years gone. Uh, but I mean, hell, that is a that is a that is a, an incredible you know dedication to grappling. But then from there to make that shift to MMA, the intensity is so different. The 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 sport is so different. Let's talk a little bit about the mindset and about what you had to do to kind of make that switch from one realm to the other because it's so different, right? It is. Uh, I mean, obviously, uh, much more intense uh, for sure. Um, you know, I, I got a later start uh, than what most would, you know, uh, would probably do in my case. Um, but I, I feel like everything happened the way it was supposed to, the, the perfect time. Um, there was no part of me that uh, that you know had any regrets or thoughts of like should I have stayed in jiu-jitsu and, and could I have done more or should I have done more um, you've done you know. plenty at that, that point so let's make that yeah. clear <laughs> I, I, I had a bit you know I like um, just to give you guys a, a kind of the full full spectrum so um, how it all really came about was uh, at the end of 2014 I had a, a major injury um, and that was right after I had just done my first MMA fight you know and for me MMA was always in the plans like um, I didn't know how much I would pursue it, but I knew that I had to do at least one fight to, you know, experience that and and learn more about who I was as a martial artist, you know, and really tap into my my whole life as a martial artist. You know, jujitsu is really only one piece, you know, of uh, of my you know my martial arts life, right? Um, and so I always knew I would do it. Well, uh, I had my first fight. And, uh, and then I, I, I got injured afterwards, uh, uh, tore my pec tendon, okay. and uh, it was a, you know, a major surgery, a major injury. Uh, it was the first surgery of my life, and uh, here I am, 31 years old, just turned 31. Um, and so coming back from that, I really had to put things in perspective. That was the first time that the, the pause button had been hit. You know, since I was 15 years old, every year was, you know, Pan Ams, Worlds and every tournament in between, Pan Ams Worlds, every tournament in between. Then the Europeans came around. Then it's Europeans, Pan Ams Worlds. Then the Europeans, Pan Ams, Brazilero World. You know, like the whole season. That was every year of my life, for more than half my life at that point. Um, and I was really hung up on chasing that second gold medal uh, at the World Championships. You know, as a black belt, that was something that, you know, BJ Penn inspired me. I was there. I watched him do it live. And I said, you know, I got to be the next American to do that. And, um, you know, that dream came true. And then it was like, okay, I have to win again. I have to win again. Um, and I, I put way too much in my mind about, you know, that title, like having to define who I was. And Why and the two times? Uh, you, you said it in many interviews that it was the second title or like the, the repeat that really almost haunted you that was you obsessed over it. how come I, I felt like the greats were the ones that you know got the gold multiple times you know and uh, I didn't want to be a, a one-timer you know mm -hmm. I wanted to establish myself as one of the best of my generation and um, and also become the first become the, the first, first American to do non-brazilian mm -hmm. to, to do too and uh, and so uh, you know I had a lot of motivation to achieve that well you know, years pass and I'm not getting there. And I, I could see once that pause button got hit, you know, I could see how much I felt like I was, you know, I was doing things because I felt like I had to, not always because I was super inspired to, mm -hmm. you know, and and I felt like I had to be at the Pan Ams because that was where you warmed up for the world, blah, 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 blah. And, uh, and I just kind of got stuck in that jujitsu tournament grind season um, and I forgot to just you know be appreciative of what I had managed to accomplish um, and when that pause button got put on you know I had months and months of no training and really thinking about what I was going to do coming back um, you know and, and wondering if I was going to be able to come back to begin with and you know how my body would be and and uh, just what I was going to do you know and in that time frame I, I got to you know finally sort of come at ease with what I had done in jiu-jitsu like okay I didn't get two gold medals but I medaled eight years in a row <laughs> in in four different weight classes all four of the heavy weight classes um, you know and I 
won many other titles, becoming the first non-Brazilian to do several of those things. Well, I mean, and let's just run through some of those quickly, you know. So, obviously, world champion, three-time no-gi world champion, two-time pan champion, two-time Brazilian national champion, European champion. Uh, I believe you were the first uh, the first non-Brazilian to do the Grand Slam as the well. The first person. The I first just, person to do the Grand Slam, yeah. is that right? Oh, wow, okay. So, I mean, that is a, a laundry list of achievements, right. and yet, I and still yet, didn't feel, I still <laughs> didn't feel satisfied until that injury, and I just, you know what? It's okay, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's okay, and I, and, and I, like I said, I could tell how comfortable I was with that same routine and how I was kind of losing the, the, that feeling of, of being hung, hungry and inspired all the time. You know, I had my moments where I really was inspired in Brazil when I won the absolute and different, different tournaments, different super fights and first metamorphosis and things like that where I was like, I was super inspired. But the, the consistent grind of the tournaments, I wasn't always inspired. You right, know, and I feel like it my performance kind of, was was affected by that. The cycle you get locked into that cycle, and sometimes it is difficult to look at the bigger picture. Yes, right, and especially the frequency uh, with with which jujitsu competitors have to have to compete because the there is really no off season. No. right, you know, you, you, you there's the gi season, and then there is the brief no gi season, but there's no real break there where you can step back yeah. and look. If at If you want to compete multiple times a month, it's easy. Yeah. Mm. You yeah, know? and even the big major tournaments now, with especially with the international growth of jujitsu, there are even more opportunities yeah. to compete. So yeah. guys are competing every month in major tournaments all over the world. So it's it's interesting you mentioned about how that injury kind of made you sort of step back and and mm -hmm. you know kind of look at what you were doing. And obviously the new challenge was was right there, so you decided to go the MMA route. But yeah. also the switch to MMA. Now you didn't go in as a complete novice, like a lot of people athletes who have made the switch from jiu-jitsu to MMA, some have had success, others have not. The ones who have not have generally had to start from scratch at that point. They've made the decision to go to MMA and it's been a very steep learning curve. Now you were very lucky because your lifelong background as a martial artist, you kind of like, you're, you're pretty much there, you know, from the get-go, right? So it was a case of getting that experience as a competitor. But tell me about the the, the first couple of fights, just getting your feet wet in that different scenario, how mm -hmm. was that for you? Well, you're a white belt all over again, you know. Um, and Were you though? Were you really a white belt? Oh, 100%. Wow, 100%, okay. 100%. Um, you know, and that's, like, that's what I was inspired to do, get out of my comfort zone, feel that once again, you know, feel that, feel those unknowns, you know, and, um, and, you know, like I said, discover who I am as a martial artist even more, put my whole life, um, you know, into one, you know. Um, and uh, it, it definitely, especially the first couple fights, man, uh, you're, you're, you're very stressed. Um, you're definitely, there's, there's fear, you know. Uh, and that fear doesn't really leave. Uh, you understand it more, you know, and you accept it more. Um, but uh, Do you think when you, sorry to interrupt, but when you say that you were a white belt, in MMA, you know, that he doesn't that want to believe of, you. He doesn't think you're. A white I don't belt. believe you. No, I will. I refuse to believe it now. But you're talking about the white belt almost like um, in a symbolic sense of that kind of going in and, and knowing, you know, that you don't necessarily know everything and there's a lot to learn. But it sounds like we're not talking about skills here because, you know, you were you were a very proficient martial, martial artist in, in, in the various phases of combat, right? So sure. it seems that what you're mentioning right there about the, the experience of fighting mm -hmm. and this, the different stresses that you encounter uh, in the MMA world, that you, it seems that that was something completely new that you really had to learn yeah, to deal with. For sure. And, and keep in mind, you know, I've never, I've never been in a real life altercation ever ah. in my life. Um, and so my first fight in the cage was my first fight ever in my life you know and so, so I punching had, somebody with real intent having somebody come at you trying to take your head off that that intensity of a real life combat it was all new wow it was all new um and you know that's so an intense that's an intense very situation, intense right? <laughs> very intense like i said you know uh leading up to those first few fights i mean um the the two months of camp i mean i would uh uh, it, it'd be hard to smile, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I, you know, would get beat up. I still get beat up uh, for sure, but uh, you, you get more used to it and you understand that, that uh, you know, you understand better 
that whatever happens in in camp uh, you can't like in, in your training you can't say that's like the exact representation of how you're going to perform mm -hmm. you know you have to accept more that uh, that you know when you're when you're sparring you know wall muay thai you know uh mma rounds and you got fresh guys rotating on you like you're gonna get hit you're gonna make mistakes um you know you're, you're gonna like i said feel like a white belt again you know like uh, in jujitsu you know obviously i got my my butt kicked plenty of times by by my sensei solo and shanji hibero um but i got to a level where you know um I, I didn't feel that all the time and I was too comfortable, you know, mm, maybe and not getting pushed like you would exactly, mm. you know, I mean you you get the skills you have the experience and you know, it, it's rare that you make mistakes to where you get submitted or maybe your guard doesn't get past that often or things like that and uh, and there I was just feeling like I was getting beat up over and over again, you know, um, it's probably been a while you know, there's a very short list of people in the world who can take you out of your comfort zone in jujitsu, right? So yes. it's probably been a while since you felt that that again. Right, right. And even even when I do get beat up in jujitsu, I'm still comfortable with it because I grew up getting beat up in jujitsu. You know what I mean? So this was a whole other, whole new thing. And uh, and when I was coming back from my my surgery, you know, I I decided that I wanted to to experience that. I needed to I needed to do that. Um, I, I wanted to get out of my comfort zone and of course I still wanted to do jiu-jitsu and grappling matches but I decided you know what I'm gonna stay away from the tournament um, you know all the tournaments and just do what I'm most inspired for and so the super fight scene has been really awesome being able to jump in different pro events and uh, and get matches against guys that I'm definitely motivated for and be on a big stage and sort of replicate the MMA vibe of you know, being on a stage, just you, you have weigh-ins, sometimes there's the face-off and everything else, just like an MMA fight. And so I've kept myself in that rhythm. Um, it's almost like practice, huh? It's practice, yeah. stay sharp, you know. Wow. Um, but uh, nowadays, I, I am having a lot of fun with MMA. Uh, I love the challenge. I, there's so many things I love about it. I love how it brings everything in my life together, you know. All my years of training, all my... My family, like my 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 brothers, you know, and my my father's in my corner, Shanji Hibeto's in my corner, my Muay Thai coach who I've been training with. This is our ten year anniversary of training, um, since the first time I trained with my Muay Thai coach, uh, Mauricio Amado, who's uh, head of Evolu Sound Thai with his brother Dita. Um, you know, this is our ten year mark, and here I am fighting for the title now. You know, and so it just. You know, uh, jujitsu is obviously my number one passion. That's what I've committed the majority of my life to, and that's what I'll do forever until, you know, until they, they like I told you, until they bury me. But <laughs> Those are my uh, favorite lines in that whole interview. So I'll be competing <laughs> until they put me in the ground. I, yeah. I love it. <laughs> that's uh. it. But there's much more to my martial arts life than just jujitsu. And when I'm, I'm fighting in the cage, everything comes together and for me that's like just an amazing feeling and um yeah now here we are in general uh mma is, is accepted as being more difficult on the whole but would you say being able to space your fights out have longer camps not being a tournament grind that might be a little bit easier to to maintain peak levels in mixed martial arts than it would be in the jiu-jitsu circuit well, in jiu-jitsu, you know, if you're competing all the time, you're going to get some some losses. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, especially you fight the same people, you know, multiple times throughout your career, maybe even in a year. You know what I mean? Um, they get your game figured out. They make adjustments. There's, you know, there's rules. There's points. There's Yeah, sometimes there's, one bad ref call, you know, the wrong exactly. way. Exactly. There's yeah. a lot of yeah. variables. And that's definitely one thing I was feeling with jiu-jitsu that I was like, you know, I want the fight to be more in my own hands. You know what I mean? And in MMA, obviously, there's points. You know what I mean? There, there's scorecards and things like that. But when they lock the cage and that referee says fight, you know. It's pretty much generally, in your hands at that Generally point. speaking, yeah. <laughs> if you lose, you feel like you lost. You know, for the most part. Mm. Um, there's close decisions for sure. But... Um, it's not like jujitsu, you know what I mean, where there's so many variables uh, going in. Um, so for me, actually, the way I feel is 
obviously camps are more enjoyable nowadays, but generally I would say the difference between MMA and jiu-jitsu for me personally is the you know the the, the MMA camp day to day is way more intense, um, a lot more stress. It's hard on your body. Jiu-jitsu is hard on your body as well, but the impact, you know, getting hit, cuts, you know, different things like that, um, you know, you you really have to make sure you're getting your recovery. You know what I mean? Um, but um, the day of a fight, even the couple days, you know, right before, you're for me, I'm really like, okay, that's it. Like, really? I, I, I've, I've done everything possible, and you really it's it's instincts it's your training like you know you're gonna perform you're gonna do what you're trained to do and and I, i'm a, a like backstage before i walk out i'm i'm very calm wow i'm very calm you are but nine fights in now as well so you have a little bit more experience of that even too, in right? the beginning though even mm. in the beginning you know in the beginning the the two months before i was kind of a bit of a wreck but even on the day of i was still calm wow now the two months before, I'm not a wreck. I have fun, <laughs> but but but, the <laughs> but there's still there's still plenty of tough days where you're just like, oh man, yeah. you know what I mean. <sighs> it's know? interesting what you but mentioned there about in jiu -jitsu, that. In jujitsu, let me f finish Sorry, the, the thought. Ahead. In jujitsu, it was the opposite. I'd have mm. more fun and, and training camp for you know really uh, four to six weeks. You know, like for the worlds is kind of when you maybe have the longest camp. But uh, since you're always on the mats, like you really only had to turn it up maybe two to four weeks generally. Um, and then for worlds or a major Brazilito Pan Ams, maybe it's four to six. Mm. Um, so it's a shorter camp. You're way more happy throughout camp, but the day of Jiu Jitsu events, I'm actually more of a nervous wreck. Wow. Uh, because I'm thinking about, okay, I gotta fight this guy, then that, possibly this guy, he's gonna play this game, that game, da 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 da, you know, the points, you know, advantages. Are we going to get stalled out? You know, what's going to happen? How's the call is going to be? Who, you know, da 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 da. Fight on two days. There's the first day, there's the next day, you know, and it's a a bit more rough, uh, I feel. But MMA fight, one fight, one night, let it all go, trust your instincts, that's it. So it sounds to me like um, there's a there's a phenomenon in in sports psychology uh, known as um, as arousal and uh, and then specifically the flow state as well. So um, it sounds like in the jujitsu tournaments, it's not conducive. The experience is not conducive to being in that what they call a peak state of arousal, uh, being in that calm yet focused, attentive state for yeah. peak performance where you go out and you enter the what they call the flow state, which is where you turn off that, you know, you, they go to what they call the reptilian brain, right? Mm -hmm. Where simply the instinct takes over, you know, the, the, the movements flow, mm -hmm. you don't have to necessarily it's, think so much about what you're doing. It sounds like the open, MMA yeah. experience is a more conducive to that than the jujitsu arena. 100%, like I said, it's up and down. You have round one, round two, you gotta come up back down you know da, 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 da. and uh you know it might be 20 minutes from match one to my, match two then it might be an over an hour before you get match three you know what i mean depending on how the brackets go you sit there you're warmed up too much too people soon people want to come talk to you mess yeah, with you. Yeah. Mm. you know what i mean uh 100 so um you know that's why i prefer the super fights nowadays you know i've still jumped in the masters a couple times mm -hmm. that was more because I had a lot of students there in, in the Masters. The vibe at the Masters is just well, amazing. You and your dad competed at the same tournament yeah, too, so right? Awesome. So we did it together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, the year before, Shanji and I competed together, and uh, and it's more fun, you know. Mm. And you get to do all in one day. I'd rather do seven, eight matches in one day than four and four, uh, one hundred percent. I'd rather go gotcha. all day than than split it up, have to go to bed and wake up and go again, you know. I know I, we've enjoyed watching you a lot in the, the various grappling super fights you've been doing. You've been super active in Fight to Win. Uh, you've got a, a really good relationship with those guys. And uh, man, you've had a, a, some, some fantastic matches there against various big names and very active names from the world of grappling. I'm just off the top of my head. You fought guys like Roberto Cyborg, Yuri Samoyes, Josh Hinger. It's, um, it, it, it's interesting as well because you've still got not much of a problem in bouncing from gi to no gi too, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm still 
doing jiu-jitsu all the time, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, I, I'm in the gi multiple times a week, you know, teaching my, my boys, getting them ready for their competitions. We have competition training. Um, and obviously, I'm not, that's not my focus. Um, but I'm, I'm still watching all the events. I go coach when I can, um, seeing what's going on. I actually still feel like I'm getting much better, um, you know. And, and maybe it's because it is more fun right now. Um, and then I don't have that stress or that pressure on it. Um, uh, obviously, going to Nogi is a little easier um, because that's what I do the most of. In fact, last year uh, was the first year in my life since I had done my since I did my very first jujitsu tournament at like 12, 13 years old. Um, last year was the first year in my life that I didn't have a gi match. Uh, wow, that's in, crazy! In, in a year, is that going to change this year? <laughs> Uh, with it being an ACC year, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, you know, I, I I'm I love it. I love jujitsu. I love staying active. I, I want to keep my jujitsu sharp. And uh, you know, it's it's different. You know what I mean? Like I said, it's not my focus. I can tell. Um, you know, like for example, in, in nogi grappling. I'm not as slick with my transitions anymore, you know. Um, you can't afford to be an MMA, right? Yeah, you so, can't. You can't mm-hmm. miss. You can't miss a, uh, an opportunity. You know what I mean? You have to control the person, keep them down, you know, and um, pick your spot very wisely. You can't. If you, if you miss and you end up on bottom, that can change the whole fight, you know. So. Um, Pre- and I get to use punches. I get to use elbows to set up myself. I was going to ask, how so, much striking yeah. has become ingrained in your no-gi grappling like on the ground? Do you, do you use that, incorporate that much more? I, I, I definitely can tell, like, uh, you know, I, I think most people know me, you know, as loving the top game, pressure passing. I love to mount, you know. Now it's great because that transition's so great to MMA, and I get to mount, I just sit up and let it go, and then, the, you know, the submissions come, right? Because you're going to get a reaction, you know what I mean? Um, and and if it's gi, I get to put my hand in the collar, you know, and that's great. Fist full of collar, right? Um, no gi, you get to mount, you know, before I could kind of maybe set up some slick stuff and... You know, if there's a scramble, you know, you invite the scrambles because in no gi, you kind of need a scramble to catch somebody, right? Well, now I, I'm all about like pinning the person. I, I, I don't, I try not to let there be a scramble because a scramble, they use the cage, yeah. you got gloves on, they can get back up and you have to start to fight over It's much over more again. conservative, right? Yes, much more conservative. And now I've explored my game and being able to just pin somebody, you know, keep them flat and then raise up and let it go, and then the submission will come. Because that's and a criticism so if, if I can't see, hit yeah. them, and I'm mounted, you know, I, I don't have all the setups because mm-hmm. I just want to sit up and hit them. It's a know? criticism we've seen sometimes of MMA fighters is that, oh, their grappling sucks, their grappling is like, it like just looks like a blue belt or whatever, but it's 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 not necessarily the skill of the person, is it? It's it's what you actually, you can do in that situation. I think a lot of jujitsu guys, they will be quick to criticize MMA fighters for their perceived lack of grappling ability, but it's not necessarily the case, yeah. is it? Not at all, not at all. And I'll tell you, I, I feel that my experience in MMA has made me a better jiu-jitsu practitioner, a better jiu-jitsu artist. Um, I understand a, a, a different element, you know what I mean, um, that I wouldn't know or have experience without it. Like I said, now I, I have these, I have this better control on top. And I am, you know, you work hard to be more precise because you don't get second chances, you know. You can't rely on that. You can't, you can't miss that mount end up on bottom and say, oh, well, I have six or seven points. I'll win on points. Mm-mm. No. Now you're getting you, punched in the face. Exactly, exactly. And so, you know, you, you have to be more precise. You understand how the strikes change everything. And then you have people that don't want to play guard. You know, you get on top in jiu-jitsu, everyone's pretty, you know, accepting of, okay, I play guard. Well, now you're dealing with people that are, are experts at getting back to their feet. You know, and there is no guard. You can't leave any space because they'll get up, you know. And so you have to stay connected, stay attached. So my pressure has gotten even better, you know. And all these things that I wouldn't have developed otherwise. Um, so, you know, for me, I always stress, like, do everything, everything. Gi, no gi, you know, um, points, no points, 
you know, ADCC experience, all the different rules and formats. And hey, when you can, even if you're pure jujitsu or whatever, like you don't even like to compete, you know, put some little gloves on with control and just just tap. To, yeah. Well, to, just just see what it's like. See yeah. how you feel. You changes know? things a lot. Right? It changes things <laughs> a lot. It changes it a lot. And that's where jujitsu came from. You know, that's the roots. And uh, and you know, you should, you know, understand how your game applies in those scenarios. Very, very interesting. I, about the um, the MMA thing as well is that um, we had Wagner Holter in here a couple of months ago, right. and uh, and Wagner obviously a very experienced MMA fighter and grappler also. Um, you know, went to the uh, UFC mm. and I'm and a big fan of his multiple time ADCC veteran, much like yourself. So. Uh, he was talking about how his his passing system that he uses in Nogi, he mm -hmm. calls it his float passing system. It's very reminiscent of your pressure passing system and the especially the position. headquarters yeah, yeah. position. Yeah, And he actually told us after he demonstrated us and, and we felt the miserable pressure that he generates, <laughs> yeah. um, he told us he, he pretty much created it for MMA mm -hmm. because it was you know a, a really advantageous position to strike from. Mm -hmm. So how much of your jiu-jitsu have you found has been very useful in your MMA? Uh, super useful. Um, you know, and that's from a couple different sources. You know, first, um, you know, my father is my first teacher, my first martial arts teacher. Uh, you know, obviously he, he got me started when I was, as soon as I can move, basically, as soon as I was walking. I mean, there's pictures of me, three, four years old, him holding mitts and things like that. Uh, even videos of us training together when I'm super, you know, super small. Um, and, you know, my father, he he, he comes from, um, you know, a whole another era, right, of martial arts. You train martial arts for self-defense, you know, for, for real life uh, practicality. And, um, and he's from the, the, the JKD influence. You know, Bruce Lee was his hero. Uh, Bruce is also one of my heroes for Bruce sure. Lee first ever mixed martial artist, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And um, and so, growing up under that, you know, it, when we first started learning jujitsu, uh, we were learning jujitsu as like, look, this is an element of self defense that we have to have. It was about real life practicing, you know, or, or, or practicality, you know. Um, you know, it, when in the beginning when we were training jiu-jitsu, I didn't even know there was a world championships. You know what I mean? There was no thought of, of winning medals or winning tournaments. Um, and it was like, okay, look, we, you, you know, 90% of all fights end up in a clinch. You know what I mean? This is the best place to take a fight on the ground. You have complete control. I mean, it was all those things like that you learned from the very, you know, the Gracie and action videos back in the day, right? Um, and so, that was my my roots in jujitsu was for for fighting and um you know the 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 the, the first rounds of jujitsu that we did was always no time limit go to the sub you know what i mean and and it was like you know it, it was all about you know uh real life practicality and um and then so that was my roots of jujitsu mm. Fast forward to when I'm training with Sensei Solo and Shanji, um, you know, and then getting that style of jiu-jitsu, which comes from the old school um, and is all about achieving the mount, you know, for the most part, um, you know, and, and, and like the fundamentals, the close guard, mount, you know, escapes, pressure, um, you know, those things that for me, I feel like give you a timeless jiu-jitsu, you know. Um, when your when your foundation your fundamentals are so strong, you can really like just go through generations and still be right there. I mean, you know, Shanji is is an amazing example, it's a perfect example of, yeah. of this. Yeah. Last ADCC, he's getting three or four close guard arm bars in no incredible yeah. in no gi at the at the highest level. No I mean, gi. Who even does that anymore? Right? Exactly, <laughs> <Yeah>. exactly. <laughs> and uh, you know, he's uh, you know in his late thirties and still having that kind of performance and when you see if he does lose it's advantages it's two points like he's not getting dismantled by anybody mm. you know and it's just because his his foundation is so strong there's not a lot of mistakes you know um and so 
I, I believe that that style transitions so well to MMA because it's not really relying on grips or, you know, a, a sporty style game. You know what I mean? Not to say that sp sport jiu-jitsu isn't good jiu-jitsu, but um, there's definitely some things, obviously, you just, you're not going to do in a fight. You know what I mean? It ha it's a simpler, like you said, a simpler um, world, you know, and it usually comes down to those fundamentals. Um, and the mount is, you know, where you want to be. For me, that's where I feel like, you know, that the fight's going to be over. And, uh, and I, you know, getting that along with the roots for my father and everything else, that's what I'm saying, it puts everything together for me um, into me feeling like I'm doing what, you know, I was meant to do. We've, um, you know, we've been following jujitsu, you know, competitors and, 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 and various names from the world of grappling, making their transition into MMA the last couple of years. Um, some who are very much established, you know, we're talking like the Damian Maia, the you know, Jacare kind of figures. And um, recently there's been a, a, a kind of a wave of grapplers also moving into MMA. And um, now we've always, you know, you look towards you as a perfect example of that you know nine fights six wins by submission you know one of the best representatives of jujitsu in the cage that we have currently um but there's a lot of a, a you know sort of a, a second wave of these guys coming through a younger generation um let's throw a couple of names out there and, and i'd just love to hear your opinion on on how these guys are doing and, and what your thoughts are to see them in action a lot of guys you'll be familiar with um one big name that people are talking about a lot dylan dennis had his first fight got his second coming up soon also a bellator fighter what do you think about dylan uh i mean he's had his first fight you know um there's still a lot more you know to 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 see and uh, how he grows, you know, how he deals with getting hit, and um, you know he's pulling guard in his his first fight, which you know uh, will be much harder to do as uh, things move along. Uh, I mean, he, you know, he may not have all the accolades as a black belt um, that that some other uh, jiu-jitsu guys, you know, that have transitioned to MMA successfully have had, like the Damian Mayas and Jacare's. But Dylan definitely has good jiu-jitsu, and um, you know, uh, I think he'll he'll do well if as long as he grows, you know, and he's taking the right fights. I think he is. So uh, let's see. You know what I mean? Seems like you're reserving judgment on that one. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's hard, right? Well, he's only had one, one, one fight. Yeah, yeah it's one yeah. fight. It's one yeah. fight. I mean, he he likes to say he's the best grappler in MMA. Um, you know, we have to keep seeing. Right? Are you interested to see how that goes, though? Is it something that you'll be keeping an eye on? Because you know he's managed to generate a lot of press, right? So, yeah, he definitely has. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I I love to watch. You know, I do, uh, and he's in the same organization, and so you know, uh, you know, especially a jujitsu guy. Like I wanted them all to have success, um, for sure, and uh, you know, um, you know, it'd be awesome to see him do well. Cool. You know. Let's uh, throw some more names at you. Um, Gary Tonon. How do you think about Gary? Oh, he's, he's doing uh, awesome. He's on fire. Yeah. yeah. He's doing, yeah, really great. You can see, you know, he's very relaxed. Um, he's putting his striking together well. And he, he was a, a, a pretty good wrestler coming up as well. So um, I believe, you know, he has the, the wrestling, the jujitsu, his striking is coming together. He's putting things together very well. He's not like, you know, I got to get this to the ground right away. Uh, he's shown a lot of composure. He comes from a great camp. Um, you know, he even I, seems to avoid going to the ground on purpose sometimes. I like keep it standing to work on his skills a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. I think he's like he's going to be right up there. One thing sure. I think is very evident about about Gary and, and and John Danaher, his coach, is is very very open about this fact is that they use each fight as a as a, a an opportunity to develop something new with mm -hmm. Gary, right? And we see him; it's almost coming in with a totally different style and game plan in every fight he's had so far, right? Mm -hmm. You think that that's quite a smart thing to do in in your career, right? Um, you know, like if you have the right matchup, you know. I mean, of course, everyone's different too, like. Um, you know, when you have a maybe a dangerous striker in front of you, you need to get them someone that has a lot of knockout power. You need to get them down faster. Maybe they don't have a lot of knockouts. You feel a little more comfortable, keep it on the feet a little longer. Uh, those sort of things. Yeah, it's good to get that experience. The ring time. You know, the first time I had a a fight that went the distance. Uh, well, I mean, that's happened one time. You know, and that one fight really helped me grow a lot. Um, and so, 
definitely, you know, getting that, that cage time helps tremendously um, and just getting more relaxed in there. And that's what I was saying. Like, I see that with him. He's, you know, very calm. And, uh, uh, you know, I think he's, he's going to do very well. Got another name for you, Cron Gracie. Man, uh, he looked amazing his first fight in the UFC. Uh, it was a bit of a break between his, his previous fights. Um, you know, he's in a great camp too. Obviously, his jiu-jitsu is, you know, about as high a level as it can get. Um, you know, I think in the UFC, the wrestling will definitely get to a point where, you know, you're going to have – you might run into a guy that was a stud college wrestler, you know, something like that. So, um, you know, uh, we'll see hey, one thing, you know, how things go when that happens. Um, but I know his, his hands are good. Like I said, he's in a great camp. Do you, do you think that that, that is, uh, do you think that's the case? Cause I mean, we haven't really seen it, right? We haven't seen his hands. He has, he's, he's come out and he's looked like the, the quintessential, the classic greasy jujitsu practitioner. He comes out, he has the low stance. He does the little front stomp kick, you know, mm -hmm. and then boom, gets it to ground and finishes it every time. So. He showed his hands a little bit in his fights in Japan. You know, he had some clinch, some dirty boxing, like the Diaz style, you know? Uh, he's not scared to box. Uh, he's a southpaw, so that's good. Um, I, I think you might be surprised with his hands. Like, he's comfortable. Um, but you're worried about the wrestling. I'm not worried. I, I know he's going to do great. I just, you know, I think in the UFC, there's a lot of great wrestlers. Right. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so that's a... A concern. That, that's some, you know, for every jiu-jitsu guy, right, I'd say the times when, you know... Uh, you get tested the most is whenever you're you're with a really great wrestler who has good hands. Um, so they stuff the shots, they keep it on the feet, they throw the hands, especially they have knockout power. That's when things can get dangerous, and um, and that's kind of like a trademark in the UFC. So um, you know, I think he he's going to take the the right road, and, and when he gets comes to that time, you know what I mean. Uh, we'll see. That's definitely like the time that I uh, had the decision, and I had all that. You know, cage time come come together. Uh, I was fighting against a two-time All-American. You know, and so um, that's where you know you're going to have to fight on the feet longer. You can't expect to get an easy takedown. So things change. And uh, one more name. I'm sorry, but uh, she's taking a little bit of a break. You know, family time and stuff like that. But uh, somebody who who made a lot of noise in, in a very short space of time in her MMA career was Mackenzie Dern. How did mm -hmm. you think? What did you think about watching Mackenzie? I think it's awesome. Uh, super exciting. She's not scared to mix it up either. You know what I mean? <laughs> she throws. Right? She throws hands. Yeah, scrappling. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, and uh, I mean her jujitsu is second to none. So. Um, you know, uh, it'll be interesting to see how she balances everything coming back. But um, she's young, and I'm sure she's going to be super successful. I mean, we, we've heard as well that she could potentially be coming back for ADCC later this year. I mean, that's that seems uh, that ambitious, seems like a bold yeah. goal. Yeah, but I mean, that would be incredible. That would be if, awesome. So yeah, see how that goes. You mentioned a lot. Um, styles make make matches and good fights. How granular do you get preparing for a fight? Like, what are you watching in their game? Do you pay attention to, to how much uh, does that factor into your game plan going into a, a match or a fight? Um, you know, you definitely got to do your homework, obviously. Um, with MMA, I, I you know, I, I like to leave that in the hands of my coaches a lot more. Uh, in jiu-jitsu, you know, uh, I, I study my opponents for sure, but... Um, there was definitely some moments where I felt like I overstudied, you know what I mean? And you, mm. you know, and, and that's the last thing I want to happen in an in MMA fight. So. so you're not the kind of guy who, you know, he has a picture of his opponent on the <laughs> bathroom mirror or the refrigerator, sort of looking at him every day or so. You know, young when I was younger, I definitely had some of those tendencies. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I'm not like that anymore. Um, and I mean, with my next opponent, Musasi, I mean. It, I've been watching him for years, so I definitely know what I'm getting it's into. No with, secret, right? With him, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, and uh, some of my other opponents, you know, I'd, I definitely watch a few of their fights, but I wasn't consumed by it. I maybe do one round of of like one night of studying with my coach, and then I let my coaches take care of it from there. And they might watch them much more than me, and they come and they have the the game plan, you know. Um, but uh, you know, you have to be careful that you don't 
think about all the things that they're good at and you forget what you're good at and performing your abilities. It's smart, right? Because ultimately you have to focus on things that you can control. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's no point um, exactly. expending that energy thinking about something outside of your your sphere of control. So, um, man, I mean, Raphael, this has been absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for coming in today. Let's just run through a few things quickly. Um, we can expect to see you June 22nd, Bellator uh, 223 in London, England against Gegard Musassi for the 185 pound title. I'm sure we'll be, uh, well, we'll be super excited to see that go. So best of luck with that. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, you're, you're coming back for ADCC later this year. That's uh, that's something that we, has been confirmed. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a bit of break. You'll have uh, July, August, September. You'll have approximately three Perfect months. Perfect time. Yeah. Perfect. I, you know, we were scheduled to fight at the end of January, uh, Musasi and I. And, um, you know, he, he got injured and he had to pull out. Um, I was already halfway through camp. And that was kind of a, a tough moment to just you know, figure out, okay, where we're we gonna go, what are we gonna do? And I was constantly waiting for for news, like how long does he need? When are we gonna reschedule? And and uh, you know, I it, it was a uh, a bit of a navigation, you know. Um, I ended up doing some grappling matches in the meantime once I figured out that it was gonna be a little while. Um, and then, you know, they they came to me with this this date and this car, this event, which is gonna be huge um, in Europe, um, you know, Bellator is doing big things in Europe. They have the uh, the deal with Sky Sports, which is like the ESPN of Europe, um, and Viacom. You know, um, uh, has a lot of local channels in the European countries. So people that don't even have um, you know cable, don't even have Sky Sports, many times can still access Bellator. So they have a big presence there. And this is a uh, a major major card, arguably maybe the biggest UK MMA card um, that there's been. It's your and first so, international MMA fight as well, it right? It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And I'm very excited about it. Um, you know, obviously, L.A. would have been amazing. Uh, that's where all my jiu-jitsu history is, and, and the, the jiu-jitsu community, community is so prevalent there. But um, Europe also has a very special place in my heart. Um, I've been competing and teaching there for a decade plus, and so I'm, I'm really happy to have my first international fight there. And, and I think I'm going to have a lot of the jiu-jitsu community in Europe there um, cheering for me. And uh, now we're the main event, this big car, perfect timing, summer. I don't have to, you know, I was in camp during the holidays and things like that. And so you get a uh, nice vacation. I have after. a great <laughs> amount of time. We still have nine weeks uh, from Saturday and uh, and a good little vacation afterwards, like you said. And then August, I can pick things back up, get ready for ADCC, go coach my guys at Masters and, you know, and hopefully finish the year with uh, defending the belt one more time, one more fight. Fantastic. That'd be a good year. Yeah, well, yeah, well, we are super excited for all of that. It's on the horizon. It's coming up. Um, just a reminder that if uh, if people would like to know more about your backstory, of course, we've got that fantastic documentary on Flow Grappling, The American, and I really recommend that people go check that out because it's um, it, it fills in uh, a lot of the gaps about what we were talking about Some today. Some cool old footage and stuff like that. Amazing, yeah. I, I love the old school stuff of you and your family training. I think that's that's really cool. And then, you know, for people to be able to see the relationship you have with your father as well, the influence that he's had on you as a martial artist, yes, you know, can't be understated. So, yeah, very but uh, once again, thanks so much for coming in uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you here with us and uh, guys we will see you again very soon for another episode of Fistful of Colors <laughs>